Give me a minute and we'll talk about what may be the most important moment of this counteroffensive. After months and months of small scale sabotage groups crossing the Dnipro, making trouble while the major force up in Zaporizhia kept drawing more and more reserves from Kherson up to Zaporizhia, weakening this southern flank. We may have yet another small diversionary tactic intended to distract the Russians, or we could have the beginnings of a major movement against the weakest flank that the Russians currently have. Across the Dnipro yesterday, came four assault brigades of the, uh, pardon me, not brigade size. They were company size groups, four assault companies of the 35th and 36th Marine Assault Brigades. These companies moved into Poima and Pishchanivka, just on the other side of the Dnipro, and liberated these two villages overcoming Russian defenses here. Russian commanders in the telegram channels are nervous. They're all calling for uh, this attention to this. Airstrikes, the Russians sent in airstrikes today against the Ukrainian positions here, failing to dislodge them. Reinforcements and infantry are on their way to try to dislodge the Ukrainians. But satellite imagery and intelligence tells us that there are, in fact, troop concentrations on the right bank of the Dnipro waiting to cross. Now, again, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. And it is important to point out that just getting here took months and months of careful preparation and blood. What we see is a long-term process of liberating and dislodging the Russians from the islands in the Dnipro, targeting the Russian communication equipments and infrastructure to prevent long-range communications, a whittling away and attrition of the forces around Oletsky from the forces at the bridgehead at the Antonovsky Bridge, and of course, the continued drain of these resources to the Zaporizhia front line, drawing the troop concentrations away from the left bank of the Dnipro so that this opportunity became real. Make no mistake, it is hard fought, hard won, and hard thought, and it is only the beginning Could it be a diversion? Are they trying to pull some troops from Zaporizhia back down here to weaken the front up there? Could be. We don't know. But I want to call your attention to something. This is the town of Poima in Kherson Oblast. This is just on the other side of the Dnipro, across the marshy swampland. Do you see what's there? A rail bridge. A rail bridge a rail bridge that's basically intact. Now look, I don't have any information that this bridge is part of the plan. On the contrary, all the reports are that it was a boat landing. But we know that the Russians only blew up a small segment of this bridge, just one section. If the bridge building equipment that I I believe it was the Swedes provided has been used to repair that section of the bridge, then could this become a major thoroughfare across which tanks, trucks, and personnel could be moved? Time will tell. But with the attack on Bertie Ants yesterday and the devastating effect of the ATACMs against uh, at least four KA-52 helicopters that were there, uh, plus another five MI-8 helicopters, The Russians are going to be much less able to deploy those helicopters to stop these assaults. This could bode very well if a force concentration 
could manage to cross the Dnipro with armored support, there is the opportunity to liberate Kherson, isolate Crimea, and start taking Zaporizhia from the rear. That's the world we could be living in over the next few weeks.